Hello everyone, this is Colleen Lemma, Starseed Astrologer and Spiritual Messenger from SacredSoulEmpowerment.com, here to do your weekly intuitive reading for Monday, January 3rd through Sunday, January 9th, 2022. For this week's intuitive reading, we'll be using the Power Angel Tarot Deck by Radley Valentine for the main message for everyone. And your special message card this week, depending on your stone of choice, will be coming from the Energy Oracle deck by Sandra Ann Taylor. So just a reminder, this is the first full week in January, the new month of the new year, 2022. Um, if you haven't already watched my monthly intuitive reading, you'll want to be sure to go onto my YouTube channel and watch that monthly reading complete with the energy vibration for the month as well as the year of 2022. And we also will have a message for the collective uh, after we talk about the astrological transits and then of course your special message card based on your stone of choice for that. So let's start out this week's intuitive reading by taking a look at what our stones of choice are. Okay, so the first stone of choice here is this beautiful white and brown agate. These are special intention pendants. A lot of you that uh, have watched my channel for a while know that I make these, right? So this is a white and brown agate wrapped in silver wire. It's been Reiki charged or Reiki infused with the vibration of the number nine, the number of unconditional love and service to humanity, as well as the number four, the number of focus and determination and stability. The qualities of Pisces for creative purpose and heightened intuition are infused into this one. The qualities of Capricorn for taking practical steps towards one's goals. The combining of the crown and the root chakras here for taking one's vision and bringing it into manifestation. Perfect for the new year, right? And it has infused into it. The energy of Quan Yin, the goddess of the divine feminine peace and compassion, as well as the energy of Archangel Michael to lead one on the next step of one's highest and most important destiny path. Okay, let's take a look at pendant number two. So this one here is beautiful tangerine aura quartz. And the tangerine aura quartz has been wrapped in silver wire and Reiki charged with the vibration of the number three, the number of creative self-expression and positive self-esteem. The qualities of the sign of Sagittarius for inspiration, imagination, and visualization. The energies of Chiron for healing past life wounds and traumas. The activation and balancing of the sacral chakra for self-worth self and healthy sexuality. The energies of Archangel Raphael to heal the physical and emotional body. And it has infused into it the energies of Archangel Gabriel to assist with all forms of creativity and one's life purpose that may involve communication and the arts. Okay. And then special intention pendant number three is beautiful dragon's blood jasper and the dragon's blood jasper this one's wrapped in gold wire and this is reiki infused with the qualities of the number nine number to open the heart chakra to universal love and dissolve all fears of the past it also has infused into it the energy of the number eight the number of courage inner strength and standing in one's personal power and truth the sign of libra to bring balance to the masculine and the feminine energies with oneself and the activation of the heart and the root chakras to open up that heart center to healing and love in all of its forms and to ground that energy into one's physical reality. Okay, so again, your Special intention stones of choice are the white and brown agate, 
We've got the tangerine aura quartz, and we've got the dragon's blood jasper. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the astrology for this week. Now, there's not a whole lot going on this week, interestingly enough. We have a kind of a quiet week, not as much going on. On Wednesday, the 5th of January, we have Venus which is the planet of love, relationships, values, money, finances, all of our personal resources. She's retrograde right now in the sign of Capricorn, and she is in a sextile connection to Neptune, the planet of the spiritual realm and creative inspiration and imagination and, to me, miracles and magic, which is in his home sign of Pisces. So when we have a sextile aspect between two planets, it's an aspect of opportunity, meaning there's an opportunity here for something good, but we have to take some sort of action. We have to be aware of what's going on around us and be aware of the opportunity, and then we have to take some sort of action to make something happen with it. And so with Venus in Capricorn, and it's connecting with Neptune and Pisces, I feel like there's an opportunity here you know, to really kind of move into the heart center, to move into the heart chakra, to move into the ability to express our emotions with uh, other people, to feel value in oneself because Venus rules our sense of self-worth. Right now she's retrograde, so we're internalizing or kind of going within to kind of uh, feel out that energy regarding our relationships with other people and feel out that energy regarding how we're valuing ourselves and how we feel worthy or deserving of certain things or circumstances in our life. And with that sextile to Neptune, we might want to look for the opportunity of some sort of message, some sort of magical message from the universe that can bring us some information regarding the relationships in our life, maybe regarding business or career, because she is in Capricorn and she rules that, or Capricorn rules that area of life with the career and our business projects. So there might be some magical message there. Um, there could be something just magically kind of happening or appearing, but we have to kind of look for it and, and uh, take action on it when something appears. On Saturday the 8th, yes, we're jumping all the way to the weekend now, we have the sun, which is also in Capricorn at this time of the year, connecting with Venus retrograde in Capricorn. So Venus retrograde connected with Neptune on Wednesday. Now she's connecting with the sun, which is more of a masculine, authoritative uh, energy. Uh, where we're shining our light, we're shining our light through the lens of Capricorn right now, which is again, our own sense of inner authority, uh, business projects, goals we're working on, career path. So something may be happening here. Um, and I know it's the weekend, but regarding our goals and our ambitions, regarding again, um, valuing ourselves and valuing our projects even and putting shining our light towards whatever those goals or intentions or what we want to accomplish out in life is all about so I feel like that can be a really good and positive uh, aspect you know, the Sun is shining its light upon something Venus is a planet of blessings um, so again as long as we are valuing what we're doing valuing our, our projects that we're working on valuing ourselves in any kind of relationship or just valuing ourselves in general I feel like that can be really good on Sunday the 9th, Mercury, the planet of the mind, ruler of the mental realm, ruling our thoughts, ideas, perceptions, and communications, is sextile Chiron, the wounded healer and shaman, in the sign of Aries. So Chiron brings up these wounds from our past. Usually they're past life wounds. And in Aries, it's about the self, our self-confidence, our courage, our independence, our self-identity. Mercury in Aquarius in a sextile to Chiron uh, gives us an opportunity to um, contemplate from a higher perspective what we're going through to gain greater understanding. It also provides an opportunity to speak or communicate with other people that maybe there's some wounds with that we have to um, heal, that we have to 
be more aware of and aware of whatever the relationship dynamics are. And it, typically it has to do with um, not, again, valuing or um, recognizing our own self-identity within these relationships, or again, lacking confidence or courage um, within some sort of circumstance or situation. And Mercury in Aquarius is giving us that maybe aha moment or epiphany, or again, allowing us to receive a message um, from other people or from the universe that's needed in order to uh, bring healing uh, into our lives, whether it be within ourselves or within our relationship dynamics. Or this communication with other people might help to further the healing of some sort of self-confidence wounds within ourselves. Okay, so that's what's going on astrologically for the week. Let's go ahead and take a look at what the message from our angels and guides are um, from the Power Angel Tarot deck. So I already did a meditation and <clears throat> pulled three cards or three cards decided to show themselves to me in some way, shape or form. And we're gonna look at that first card here now. Okay, so the first card is the Page of Raphael. In this deck, this is the Page of Cups in the traditional tarot. So the page is about messages. Usually the pages, the court cards of the page are about, it's the messenger, it's, they're messengers. And this is messages of love, messages of uh, intuition, um, because that's what the cup suit is all about, right? And it says at the top, it says gentle, loving, dreamy, and open-hearted. And at the bottom, it says a new emotional situation and messages regarding relationships or social invitations and great intuitive insights. So with the page of Raphael or the page of cups, we're more empathic, perhaps we're more emotional, we're more intuitive. Again, we are having more open, honest conversations about our emotions with other people. There might be messages coming to us about our relationship, about love, about connectedness. It is right after the holidays and a lot of people, to me, a, a word that just pops into my head is sentimentality. There's a lot of sentimental energy here or, or reflection kind of on the past and our past emotional state and our past connections with others or past relationships. And so I feel like, um, especially with Venus retrograde right now, there might be messages from the past and whether that's an actual person popping back into our lives, calling us, texting us, um, or whether we're, we are reaching out to that person, maybe we're trying to heal something or get closure on something that's happened already. Um, this also can be messages within our own kind of heart, within our own spiritual body, where we're um, receiving these emotional messages uh, of healing from our higher soul self or from our angels and guides, from the universe itself where we're having these kind of you know epiphanies or aha moments here you can see this angel in the background here this woman is sitting what looks like to be on a beach looks like she's contemplating something or maybe feeling alone or trying to figure out what's happened or what's going on again maybe this is about relationship matters and archangel raphael here because it's the page of raphael right so archangel raphael is the archangel that helps us to heal our emotions and heal our emotional body and heal relationship issues and challenges with other people. So it just really seems like there's some sort of messages or communication or information that's coming to us on that emotional or relationship kind of level. Again, a new emotional situation, um, messages regarding relationships and, and intuitive insights that we receive regarding those. Let's take a look at the next card and see what we've got going on here. Okay, another court card. This is kind of reminiscent of the January monthly reading. This is the King of Gabriel or Gabriel. Now the King is the most mature of the court cards, right? A, a masculine authority figure. The suit of Gabriel in this deck is the fire or wands suit. 
So I say it's reminiscent of the January reading because interestingly enough, and I, I did that not too long ago, recorded that January reading, but in this week, this first week of January, we have the page of Raphael to start. The first card I think it was in the January reading was the queen of, now we didn't use this deck, this is like the page of cups, it was the queen of cups. The queen of cups was the first card in the January reading. The second card in our weekly reading is the king of Gabriel or the king of fire or the king of wands. The second card in the January reading was the Knight of Wands or the Knight of Flames or Fire. So they're different court cards, but there's still some similarity here with the cups and the emotions and the king and the fire and the spiritual creative sort of energy. Um, I think that's interesting that there's a, that kind of significance between the two. This, as just as I said in the monthly reading, this can be people in our lives too. You know, with the queen and the knight in the January reading, the page and the king in the first week of January reading, this can indicate other people are important as we start out the year. So whether those other people are significant others, whether it's uh, other family members or children, uh, this could be friendship, this could be business stuff, especially with the king here. You know, the king of Gabriel, the king of fire can be very business related here. And it says at the top of the card, generous, inspirational, dramatic, and what does that say? Driven? Drives? Driven. <laughs> Driven. It's a little dark in here. I know it looks bright where, where you're seeing me, but got some lights here, but to me it's dark over here. Okay, so keep your eyes on the big picture, it says. Keep your eyes in the big picture. Leave the details to others. And it says experience that leads to success and genuine concern from other. So this king is inspirational. He's leadership oriented. He's driven. He's ambitious. Again, that's very... Um, like career oriented, goal oriented. And and on Saturday the 8th was when we had the sun in Capricorn connecting with Venus in Capricorn. And again, that Capricorn energy is about our, our business projects, our career path, our life path, our destiny path, our own sense of leadership, our inner authority, taking charge. And the king, the king always takes charge, right? And in the suit of fire, He's taking charge on with the spiritual and creative energies that he has to work with. Now he's sitting on his throne. He's got flames around him. He's not too bothered or worried about anything. He's just kind of standing, sitting, I should say. He's sitting in his power. He's sitting on his throne of power. And it says, keep your eyes on the big picture. So what's the big picture, right? We're just into the first full week of January in a new year, 2022. So what's the big picture of the goals that you have, whether it be for 2022 or the goals you have for this month, or maybe even the goals you just have for this week? What is, keep your eyes on the big picture, the big vision. And then, you know, then we have to rein back and take those small steps towards those goals, right? But this is messages of emotions in the beginning of the week. And I feel like this is more the Venus and Neptune thing. And somehow by the weekend, we're switching into authority mode. We're switching into, okay, now I'm not reminiscing anymore. Now I'm not going to be sad or lonely like this woman on the beach looks. Um, I've done my healing the first few days of the month of, uh, of, the d month of January. Now I gotta switch gears. Now I gotta think about what are my goals? What are my intentions? What do I want to accomplish? And how do I do that? How can I use the creative and spiritual energies and my leadership ability and my willpower and, and whatnot to move forward on this big picture that I'm holding as a vision? And um, it does say experience that leads to success. This can be you know, a very successful energy and again, these might indicate people in our lives too. I feel like it's two different realms though. 
I feel like over here we're dealing with like emotional connections with family or significant others or again maybe past relationships and healing some of that over here I feel like this is business relationships co-workers who we're working with um, what we're who we're collaborating with as far as where we want to go with our goals and ambitions and our lives our intentions for this new year and we're taking charge again so whether this is um, people or these are energies inside of us I really feel like it's two different energies going on here all right and then the last card for this week okay again very interesting we've got major arcana two and the high priestess now out of the three cards for the monthly uh, monthly reading for January the last card was the high priestess so we have the high priestess again so apparently she's very important. She really wants to be seen and recognized in this month of January so far. And this is Archangel Haniel. And Archangel Haniel is the Archangel that helps us uh, with our psychic and intuitive abilities and healing abilities. So she helps us to expand into our clairvoyance, claircognizance, clairsentience, clairaudience, and any healing abilities that we may possess or that we you know, want to utilize these uh, intuitive abilities and these healing abilities uh, for ourselves to intuit messages and to kind of again bring healing for ourselves on our path at the bottom it says powerful psychic insights okay the priestess is a powerful feminine archetype and she's very psychic she's very intuitive powerful psychic insights and it says reflection and meditation that provides valuable information and then it says be at peace so i really feel like you know we're taking some time here in the first week of the year to really go within to merge with our own divine feminine power to receive the intuitive messages and psychic insights we're needing to take you know a little bit of alone time i know that most of us are now back to work you know if you have a a job out there where you're having to leave home to go to work you're probably back to work by this week or at least some time this week so try to take some time before you go back to work take some time in the morning to meditate take some time in the evening to kind of just quiet your mind and go within because there's still some valuable information of a powerful and high spiritual level that's needing to come in and make itself known uh, to you as you move into um, this you know fresh year this new year again you'll definitely want to go and watch the monthly intuitive reading because I do touch on the the collective energy um, briefly but the universal year energy of 2022 as far as what that means for us on a collective as well as maybe a personal level so this uh, again provides some further information that we need to tap into on this kind of very intuitive but yet spiritually powerful level in this week. Let's go ahead and see what the special message is depending on your stone of choice for the week. So the white and brown agate. Those that chose the white, or white and brown agate, special message for them. This one's popping up, calling my attention. It was right on the bottom, wasn't it? Cornucopia. That's a great card to start out with for this year. Okay, so cornucopia. There's much abundance and prosperity and many blessings that are all around you, that are coming in, that are pouring in, that are shining its light uh, upon you. This is also saying to look for the blessings in everyday life, in every situation. What is the blessing, right? Because this is for this week. Master number 11, number of the light worker, the number of the visionary, using your intuitive insights, using your leadership ability as a light worker to create those blessings, to create that cornucopia of abundance and prosperity. Again, remember, it's not just about money and finances, but it can be about friendships and connections and you know, just bringing your your creative projects to life. All of these things are part of the abundance and prosperity that the light is shining uh, down upon for you 
in this first week of January, I would definitely write out your intentions for the year. Do a little ceremony of writing out what it is that you want to create and manifest uh, in this year 2022. And then maybe even making a smaller list of what you want to create and manifest, what your goals are for January of 2022. And what is the next small step that you can take to create this cornucopia of abundance in your life. That's a great message to start out with. Those of you that chose that Tangerine Aura Quartz, special message for Tangerine Aura Quartz. This one's popping up. Angel of Love. I know I got this recently. I don't know if it was one of, if it was in the no, it couldn't have been the monthly video. I chose it for maybe somebody or I don't know where it came up, but it's this has come up recently. And um, she's holding a rose quartz in her hands. She's the angel of love. This is about coming, opening up your heart chakra to self-love, opening up your heart chakra to unconditional love and forgiveness and compassion towards others. But first and foremost, towards yourself, right? Be love. And that's, you know, again, I, the energy of the number six, which is the universal year for 2022, um, the number six, the sixth major arcana on the tarot is the lover's card. And so it just reminds me again of lovers and love and heart chakra and, and you know, uh, not just necessarily romance, right? But this is just about compassion and forgiveness and nurturing and mothering and just all that divine feminine energy here is coming into play. And she's got these beautiful, I don't know if they're roses red flowers or maybe red roses in her hair. Her wings are kind of this wonderful, beautiful gold and orangey pink sort of color. And there she's got the, the pink rose quartz. So a lot of feminine colors going on. So embody that divine feminine energy of gentleness and nurturing and healing and empathy and intuition and, and, um, we're definitely healing the heart on some level here. So healing the heart of old relationships, healing the heart, um, for, you know, for greater self-love and self-respect. That's all a part of your message for this week. All right. Those of you that chose the dragon's blood, dragon's blood, dragon's blood people, special message for dragon's blood. This one's calling my attention. Ooh, contract, okay? Number six. Six is a balanced number. So if there's some sort of legal thing going on or some sort of contract that you're thinking about signing, I don't know, the first thing that pops into my head is that it's going to work out for the best. It's going to be okay. Now, I don't know with it being close to Mercury retrograde, um, you know, if it's a good time to sign it or if you need to kind of... Um, do a little bit more research and let the energies, the astrological energies come back into balance before signing it. But either way, whether you need to um, like make a decision or dedicate yourself to something or sign some sort of papers or whether you can wait for more information and do a little bit more research, I feel like you know, again, there's nothing in this card necessarily saying it. Well, except for those scales of justice look to be pretty balanced. It just feels like there's something that that comes out in your favor. I'm not going to say that it's not challenging necessarily while you're going through it, but I feel like something comes out in your favor. And you just have to trust and have faith because this woman is blindfolded, right? So she can't really see you know, physically see what's going on or what's in front of her or what's happening. And she just has to trust and have faith that these scales of justice are going to balance themselves out in her favor. So whether this is about, uh, again, an actual contract of some sort, maybe it's a business partnership, maybe it's you know, you're moving and you got to sign a contract. I don't know what that's about. But also remember that contract, this could be about a karmic contract, maybe a karmic contract that you've had with someone, a family member, a significant other, that karma, that karmic contract, maybe has like relieved itself of the challenge. 
something's coming back into balance, something's uh, unfolding in your favor. Now, maybe the karmic contract, if it's with another person, is done or completed, which means maybe there's a separation with that person. But in the end, this is saying that there's justice. To me, this is saying that something good is going to happen in the end and there's justice in the end. It comes out to your favor. Now, sometimes, you know, sometimes even when something ends, a relationship or even a business relationship, if a, if a karmic contract is, is done and over, it might feel challenging as we're going through it, but know that this is a favorable outcome on a spiritual level with what's happening, okay? All right. So I hope everyone's liked and enjoyed this weekly, this first weekly reading of the new year, 2022. Sending you all lots of love and light, everyone. Many blessings of prosperity and abundance as you move into this new year with your new fresh intentions. Talk to you later. See you next week. See you next month. Love and light, everyone.